Hi, you are listening to Creatrix Culture. I am your host, Sarah Wolf, and today we have a really fun episode because we have some of the participants to the the first and recent Illuminate Peyote Medicine Retreat that we did about a month ago now in Peoria, Arizona. And these are some of the participants that came here and and were open to joining me and talking about their experience. And I know for me, I told everyone I would just start with my story and then I'm going to jump back and be quiet. But even for me, after this retreat, my life honestly, like has done a complete 180. I don't really know what's happening in the, in the best possible way. So just to give you guys a little backstory and everyone that's watching and listening a little backstory. So on the second night, so we do medicine for two nights. We, um, it was Friday night and Saturday night that we sat in ceremony with the peyote. And on the Saturday night ceremony, I was downstairs in the kitchen with our shaman medicine man, Ron, and one of his friends that showed up to join the second night of ceremony, Luis. And we were while Ron was preparing the peyote. So we're talking about all of this over preparing the peyote for the evening. Ron and I were actually talking about the film industry. And I don't know if you guys know this, but he has had his hand in the film industry in, in a couple of different ways. And he has, a, uh, I think, a film that he's working on and try to get, he's taking like a bigger role to try to get, um, to try to get made. And I was talking about, some films that I'd written right before the pandemic and then this and that, but I was like where my life is now, I could, I don't, I feel like I couldn't be farther from the film industry. And I quit acting on camera probably give or take besides little things here and there, probably 10 years ago, I quit auditioning and I'd been um, doing voiceover for the past, uh, few years, like really, um, doing it with agents and stuff. And I'd gone in and out of the voiceover industry for a while, but I kind of thought that my on-camera acting career was basically over and I wasn't really trying to make it happen. I wasn't really finding the right angle. So I just let it go and I just felt like I was okay with that. So, but as we were talking about everything and he's asking me questions, like that my child self was kind of getting sad, like, oh, like, was that over? Did I give up? Did I maybe not, you know, fully like really like persevere on that angle? And it it was just kind of like a fleeting thought. And then we went into ceremony and that was that nothing more came up of it for me the rest of the, um, the rest of the trip. And then a week to the day when we came home, um, I got a phone call from my friend's manager and it was a Friday, it was Friday night. And I didn't, I was at my friend's house whose manager this is acting manager. And I know her, she's came over for a healing before and stuff. And she knows I does, I do voiceover. And every now and then she would send me a voiceover audition and I haven't talked to her in months. And she she's like, Oh, Hey, I was just calling about your voiceover booth. And I just wanted to see, I'm trying to like source booths throughout LA. So if any of my um, talent books, a voiceover, I can send them somewhere if they don't have a home studio in their home. She's like, would you be open to, you know, letting them rent out your booth? And I was like, yeah, on my website, I don't even know how much I cost. Cause I wrote it a long time ago, but they can go on my website and it's whatever I wrote. There is how much I charge. And so we look and she's like, well, let's charge more. And I was like, okay, great. That's fine. And, uh, and then she's like, okay. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll just, I'll just rep you in voiceover too. I have two agents by the way. Okay. For that. So I'm like, okay. And then she's like, um, well, is that, she's like, ah, do I want to send you the paperwork? I don't know. I mean, I don't really, she's like, well, is that all you want to do? And I was like, well, uh, no, I guess if I should do more then let's do more. 
And my friend, she's like, gets up, grabs her phone and because she's hearing the conversation and she starts texting her like, no, Sarah didn't come to LA a long time ago to not be an actress. You're going to put her in commercials and you're going to get her back to acting and you're going to rep her for everything. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I guess you're going to rep me for everything. And she's like, okay, so then the next day, so now it's Saturday. So that's one full week to the day of Ron and I are talking over the peyote about the film industry. She sends me a three-year contract of paperwork for me to fill out. And I was like, this is really crazy. Well, I thought that like, I, it would be a minute, like, I don't have updated headshots. Like my resume is like so old. Like, I didn't think like, I thought at least it'd be like a month for us to like sort all of this out before I even go on an audition for on camera. Days later, I'm sent this audition, right? And I'm like, what? Okay, I guess I'm already doing this. And it was this role of a newscaster. And I'd been doing like newscaster, like auditions for voiceover. And this past Christmas, I just thought of this today. I made my nephews at my brother's house film these short little videos with me where, because the pipes froze in Texas where I was pretending to do a news report about all the pipes being frozen in Texas, right? And I was like, that's really funny that I was like doing that at Christmas. And then, um, so that was the first audition I did and I felt really good about it. And then she just keeps sending me more auditions and like asking me, when is this going to be updated and that? And I'm like fully in it now. And I was like, I wouldn't, I don't even have time for it. Like, I didn't even know I was supposed to make time for this. Like what is happening? And then all of a sudden, so I've done like, I don't know how many auditions on camera and voiceover with her, plus with my other agents. Right. So I've just been like going, going, going. And then out of nowhere, I get a message from her, like you're booked. And I'm like, what? <laughs> She's like on the news thing. So the first audition that I do out of the gate after 10 years, I booked it. And today I was on set all day shooting it. And like, I was telling the girls before you came on, or no, I was telling Veronica before both of you guys came on, is that I really feel like some, like I, it just kept, because plant medicine is so intelligent. The plants orchestrate things all the time. And I just keep coming back to, I feel like us talking over the medicine and feeling my child self, like being really sad that that was a part of my life that I put a away. It, I feel like the plants have like orchestrated this all. Like I really do like the, the peyote spirit and maybe even I'm drinking the cacao that we drink and maybe even the cacao spirit because the cacao spirits also works with like manifestation and things in the heart. Right. But I'm literally mind blown after this retreat, even for me of like, same thing summer is like you were talking about, I'm reacting to things differently. I'm showing up differently. And now all the thing, like all of a sudden, all these things are coming into play. Like dreams that I had like 20 years ago are starting to like manifest. And to me, it's really mind blowing because I've had a lot of road, a lot of roadblocks, a lot of like, no, no, nothing, nothing, or just dead ends or whatever for years. Like, I feel like the retreat, even that it worked out for us to even do it was like the first thing in a long time that I felt passionate about and was putting into play. And it actually like manifested and, and came through. So it's been even for me, like a really incredible journey from the beginning of planning to actually being at the retreat, witnessing you all at the retreat of how you were when you came in to who you were while you were leaving and then touching base. What was that? A week ago or so, two weeks ago of, you know, how you felt coming out. And I just feel like I'm so in awe of all of it that it's like, it's something bigger than I could have ever imagined. And it's like really beautiful. And I'm like, really, like I was saying at that other, at the Zoom meeting, our post Zoom meeting, like, I'm happy I said yes <laughs> till the calling. I'm happy that Ron and Mark and Lana showed up and said yes. 
And I'm happy that you guys all took a leap of faith because none of us that facil facilitated this retreat knew them, that they just followed their intuition and their guidance. And they said, yes, that I just feel like it, it made something bigger happen. And it's like really inspiring. And like, it just, it brings me awe and joy to like that this, it just all got orchestrated and executed and it's really amazing so that's that's me that's where I'm at now and <laughs> it couldn't be more awesome but I want like I was saying I want us to go around and each one of you take a moment and um share you know as much as you want or what you're comfortable with of where you were maybe before you don't need to go too deep if if it's too personal but just you know a little tiny hint um, a little bit about your experience going through the weekend and then a little bit about, you know, where you are now and what you've seen have, has shifted in your life post retreat. So anyone can start and just say your name in the beginning. Um, yeah, just say your full name. Then I won't I won't go around and butcher your last name, Veronica. Just say your full name and then um, and then go into whatever you want to talk about. But I'll leave it up to you, whoever wants to go first. <laughs> who's going first I guess I'll go first Summer's going um, first <laughs> um all right well I'm Summer Mayhew and um I'm from Cleveland Ohio um and pretty much what brought me to um the retreat and kind of I didn't really know what I was getting into when I did, like signed up for it I was just kind of googling things and like kind of how everybody just said yes to something without really knowing what it was like I feel like that or like I don't know at least that's kind of how it felt on my end mm -hmm. um so like I just said yes to it and then I at the time I was like going through just like a lot of like just hit like hitting walls and I, everything I tried to do I was just like hitting a wall and then it was making me angry and I was getting, um, very depressing thoughts and things like that. And so, um, and I was reacting to everything, um, just overly, like just taking everything really personal. Um, and then, you know, I said yes to the retreat and, uh, when we got there, well, when I got there, I was like really nervous and like, I might be joining a cult right now. <laughs> Like, I don't know what's going on. It's like, I really, like, I, I literally from Cleveland, Ohio, like, don't know much about, you know, this, the spiritual like aspect of it and stuff. Like everything was kind of new to me. So, um, I just knew that I had to be there. Like something was telling me to go there to do this. And so, um, I got there, I was super nervous, didn't know what to expect. Um, but immediately like felt welcomed and comfortable. Um, I wasn't really able to like share much about what I was going through um, when I first got there because I was so emotional and I couldn't even like talk. <laughs> but I, that's how like bad it was. I was just like not even able to like control my emotions. And um, so like during the ceremony, we, you know, just listening to everybody else's stories and how everything kind of connected for them and how like they were feeling when they got there. And, um, you know, I just really related to everyone else. And then, um, I think the first night was pretty rough forever. I don't know, for, at least for me, it was pretty rough. Like <laughs> it felt like I was like going through something painful, like something was like coming out of me and it was painful. And, um, and then we got to the second night and it just felt like super light. I knew what was going on, knew what to expect. And, um, at no point, like, did it feel, um, like it was something I like shouldn't do. It still felt like it was something like, you know, this is good, even though it was not feeling great at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, this, by the second night, it was super light and just felt like a celebration and um, it was a little bit more happy feeling. And then the sauna that we did was something that like, I 
like just cherry on top of the like beautiful ice cream sundae. It was just, everything was great. And then the sauna like capped it off, like so amazing. Um, like how you were saying you could literally like taste the earth because it was a, like a home, like a, I don't know, like a homemade sauna, essentially. It was well, like sweat real lodge. stones. Yes, yeah. yeah, sweat lodge. I'm calling sweat it a lodge, sauna. Yeah. Yeah. I had to yeah. build it. I had to build it. Yeah, thank you, Tyler, yeah. for building that sweat lodge. That was amazing. That was like one of the coolest things I will probably ever do in my life. This whole thing probably was. I almost and tapped out. I almost tapped out. I, you know, if you laid your head down on the ground, it was like pretty easy, I felt. And I like I was not feeling the greatest when I went in there, but getting out of it, I'm like, the, oh my God, I feel so great right now. That was a really awesome way. And then the cacao ceremony that tasted so good. I still like want to buy some. I haven't. Oh yeah. Yet. I'll send you guys the link. Cause I just bought more and I'm, I'm literally, I bought this mug at this coffee shop in Phoenix. I've been oh, eyeing nice. for like three years. And I went <laughs> before I left Phoenix, I drove like 20 minutes out of the way to like buy this cup so that when I could come home, I would get more cacao and drink the cacao out of this cup did you just say you're eyeing a cup for 20 years <laughs> no oh, did I say 20 I meant for three. Oh, three. <laughs> you're eyeing like a cup. I don't know did it's you, 20 years like my brain is so fried right now could you imagine was that from like, like old town like I might be eyeballing a million that? dollar mansion did what did you get that in old town I got it in Peoria, but like Peoria is really long. So it's like the other right. end of Peoria that's by the 101. So like gotcha. even from Mark and Lana's, it's like a 20. So like from my, so it's like 20 minutes from my parents' house to Mark and Lana's. And then it's still 20 minutes from Mark and Lana's to the coffee shop, but it's also 20 minutes from my parents' house to the coffee shop, but they, it's all technically Peoria. All in, uh -huh. Yeah love it one long line no, it's not a convenient coffee shop <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's, it's a cool looking cup that's Thanks. i mean yeah I'm it's handmade definitely. this guy makes them on his you know little like wheel thing. turn thing yeah oh, that's awesome yeah definitely but arizona I, colors i know that's yeah. why i wanted it and it's like i don't know it's like sunsetty, and then with the cacao it feels like the heart and the solar plexus and it's just i don't know i just like i really wanted it as the symbol and i'm gonna bring it back now for a ceremony like this is gonna be my ceremony cup oh nice um but yeah long story short i purposely bought it so i could drink it with my cacao now but i'll send you the link but i yes. just want to say um and i don't know if you're done but i just want to say real quick i agree with the sweat lodge element like thank louise for like bringing mm -hmm. that over because after that whole journey as well I mean, we wouldn't have known what it, that we were missing anything, like mm -hmm. if it didn't, if it wouldn't have happened, but that to me really also was like the cherry on the cake and like buttoned up like a whole piece that like I also needed. Like there was a moment where that smell of the earth, right. And that last round and I sat up and it was so oddly hot in a weird way and I, I felt like the Phoenix, like I felt that rebirth feeling and I was just being burned and born at the same time. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I feel like next time I'm going to sit up the whole time through it. I, I don't think I'm going to lay down now that I know the duration of what it is and what, how, and what I can push myself through. Cause if I know when something's going to end, I'm fine. If I don't mm -hmm. know when it's going to end, that's when I whack out. So I'm curious to sit again in it at the next retreat and see what that what that happens the whole time because I was in the corner with my face like kind of like I found a little peephole under the where it wasn't fully touching the ground where I was like breathing I did too I found it opening I found it opening <laughs> yeah um oh yeah so what's life been like after so yeah, everything. Um, so how I was telling you guys about that job. So I'm a real estate agent and 
since the market has been slow, I've been selling less houses. So I picked up like a side job working from home and I absolutely hated the job. Like it took me away from doing things that I like to do when I'm not doing real estate, like clean and like work out and stuff. <laughs> so like I couldn't get anything done. It was just like driving me nuts. And I hated the actual job and they laid me off on last Thursday. And I like, feel like I normally would have been like sad about it. Um, and like, like freaking out, like thinking the world's ending and stuff. But, um, I just was like, this is, this is fine. I'm, I like, I feel relieved that the, the, like that happened. And like, I've had so many people reach out to me about buying a home or selling a home, even in the past week that it's like, I don't really care that it happened. Cause it's like, it's, which is an odd time for right now. Normally it's like, you know, even slower. Cause it's like getting close to the holidays, but people are like really trying to do stuff right now, which was surprising. And I, I don't know if that was the medicine that is like attract, letting things attract to me and like letting me let go of things that really weren't anything I wanted to do anyways but something's going on and I'm definitely, um, I'm not always perfect, but like for the most part, there's been a very good solid change. And, um, I just try to do little things every day to stay in that, um, kind of like form of ceremony, like, you know, making sure like little elements that I can do to every day, like making a tea or, you know, just making, you know, just try to do something. Like, even if it's just one thing, I try to be intentional with something. And that's something I learned from. And I think that's helping. Mm -hmm. And you raised your vibration. So like Ron was saying, right? Like, you know, after even the first night of ceremony, he's like, you guys are going to be here and you were here. So why are you going to do anything to go back down here? Right. And then after the second night, you're going to be way up here. So coming back into like, I, I, I never told you guys this. I quit. I don't think I did. I quit a job right before I left for the retreat because I knew when I came back, I wasn't going to go back. I, I couldn't vibrationally go back there. I already wow. could foresee on the other side that, that I knew it was a low vibration, but I did it out of necessity. But I was like, I know definitely now when I, I'm not going to be able to go back into that environment because that's what happens. So when things are out of alignment, um, or they don't resonate with you, especially in like the elevation process of bringing up your vibration and, or the awakening process, as you awaken spiritually, these things wow. that you tolerate, it become harder and harder to tolerate because they're not truly in alignment of your heart. You're, you're doing them because out of necessity, or you think you have to, or cause society said you had to, or whatever. So that's what starts happening in this process is these things that like, and even just where we are in the the global consciousness right now, things are falling away. This is pretty much a lot since the pandemic is to start restructuring and that we don't have to technically tolerate these things. It's, it's going towards building the life that lights you up and we don't have to sit in misery anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like a lot of people, when they got taken out of their working from home and stuff, but a lot of people like, you know, I don't know about in like Ohio or Texas, but like in California, like contractors, I was friends with contractors said like they were couldn't be more busy during the pandemic because everyone's home now. And they're like, Oh, I want to like do something different to my house. Or I'd walk outside mm -hmm. and see these families I've never seen in my neighborhood outside with kids, with their dogs. And everyone's starting to like re kind of evaluate of what's important. That's what happens also in the spiritual healing, awakening, ascending, elevating process as well. So being that you came back to a job you didn't like anyway, by the laws of the universe of how energy works, if it's not in this new vibration, it's going to have to remove itself. And you don't care this time because you're in a different vibration anyway, mm. right? So like, that's when sometimes relationships go side with like things go sideways. It's like it, your ego mind wants to hang on or get mad or throw a tantrum, which is fine. Do it. 
But really what's happening is you have to like honor like, oh, it's removing itself because I'm, I'm actually better. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's kind of cool to hear like, sorry, not sorry. No, right? I, that's, you know, I don't mind at all. <laughs> like, really, I, <laughs> I, you know, yeah, I'm good. I, yeah. Cause I feel like that's like just a really great reflection of like, yeah, girl, like you've, you've raised the bar. Right. So yeah. like, let that crap fall away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Go, you Tyler. Good. <laughs> go Tyler, me. You go? Are you... <laughs> I'll go. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it was a full name. very full name and What's where that? you live. Oh, full name. Tyler Ludwig. And then I'm from San Diego, California, or originally from Utah, but now I live in San Diego uh, with two beautiful children, as well as, as well as a, a loving wife on top of that um i took this experience um to better myself right um i felt with uh, ptsd from my father-in-law dying in my arms and and everything like that i i needed something right mm -hmm. i needed a getaway I, I've never taken a trip by myself, right? Outside of work, right? You know, work in a high sales market, uh, you know, software sales and so forth, right? That. Um, so I took the plunge, mm -hmm. right? And what I found is I showed up and shut off my phone for three days and I met amazing people. I think that was, that was huge, right? Summer, Victoria, everybody, right? We now we're in a OGs group, right? And we have fun um, talking about that. Um, and then Sarah, as well as, you know, everybody, it, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. I didn't expect to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would never, ever have ever told myself that I would do that. Right. To go just randomly get on an airplane. I bought tickets and I mean, I lived in Arizona for a while, so I knew the area, but just to, buy a ticket and leave my family. That was huge. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, summer, I know. And then Victoria, I know that it was, it's huge to leave your children, right. To go do that. Um, what I found is not only great people, but a great experience. I feel like there was, uh, with that PTSD, um, with my father-in-law, within two days, that was gone. I had been holding on to that for eight years, 10 years. Wow. Okay. Every night, thinking about it, dreaming about it, right? That is all gone. That's all gone. Um, I'm at peace with it, which is, which is awesome. Um, now have I said, or do I think that every day or every week has been easy? No, because there's other things that are going on, mm -hmm. right? Having more children or, um, falling into old habits as well mm -hmm. but i can always mentally come back to everything that you sarah as well as ron have taught me right mm -hmm. breath work massive right i think breath work is is great um 
does it help me with a um, you know problem with work or with a problem with my wife or uh, how do I understand my children right and not getting mad at them mm -hmm. it helps right and that's all that flows in is just the, in the back of your head is just understanding that there is a coping mechanism right not everything's bad mm -hmm. right life sucks in in a lot of cases right victoria i know you got mad at work and and whatever somewhere you also get mad at your job um i get mad at mine mm -hmm. all day every day right and i just have to understand that like there's bigger things and it brings me back to the relationships that we built, it wasn't just meeting new people, right? Everybody on this phone or on this call, but it was understanding that I could be a valuable resource to somebody else, mm -hmm. right? And now I know that when it comes down to my wife, my kids and, and so forth is it's not just about me, it's about everybody around me. And then also consuming that information as well is making sure that I understand that I can bring it in, I can push it out. Life's always not gravy, but there is, you know, it's cliche to say, but there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Right. And making sure that, you know, through meditation, I've changed my diet. I am now having, um, I'm actually eating fruit, which I didn't do before. Mm -hmm. um, so I make it in, hey, it's a Vitamix for my wedding and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. Um, so I'm doing that. Um, but now it's more salads. Mm -hmm. versus like a bunch of junk right and and all that crap um it was a mental switch from the experience that changed how i eat how i interact with people but then also how i understand others feelings and it made most sense when it came down to my children Mm -hmm. in the mornings they wake up at 4 30 in the morning which sucks but i love them i was frustrated after the experience i understood that they just want to have fun they just want to hang out with their dad mm -hmm. which is perfectly fine Right. And I think Summer, you and I talked about this a little bit. Um, is you can see, you know, just without being mad that it's early, but just saying, Yeah, I'll play with you. Yeah, I'll color with you. Yeah, I'll make you food. Just those simple little changes have made a huge impact on my life. And I learned that from the experience of being understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Being present, mm -hmm. making sure that you have a, know that there's going to be one day where, I mean, I take my son to school every day and he holds my hand every day. The one thing I've ever heard from my dad is there's going to be a day where he doesn't hold your hand anymore. Cherish that. Mm -hmm. Cherish what it looks like. Cherish how they make you feel as, as you know, understanding as, as you can be. But um, those are, I would say that's one of the major things that I learned from this experience is, you know, Sarah, and I, I love you to death when it comes down to 
the sounds and the everything that you did when it comes, you know, you and Ron of just implicating knowingness, right? Or knowledge, right? Of self. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a huge one, right? And I'd love Victoria and I'd love Summer, everything that you talked about um, is we can open up. Mm-hmm. We can actually be present. We could be away from our family, but still present, right? And I thank all of you for that. You're welcome. All right, enough of my rant. You put that so well into words. Like, you're <laughs> no. so good at speaking and like, just no, like, not. yeah, it's, no, it's amazing. Cause like, I've, you know, a lot of the things I do feel the same, I, you know, agree with you on. So. Yeah. I think the medicine has working with plant medicine. Like just when I was listening to you, like what was like really coming in is that it like, and I don't even know how to put it fully into words. It like, it grounds us back into like our humanness and earth and like being alive and like, yeah, like what is actually like important or what are we really, you know, we're not our life. I mean, even though we, we all have to, cause we still live in a place that money and we have to go to work, but like life isn't work. Life is the witnessing and the observing and the cherishing of like the moments of holding your son's hand at school, you know, and like it's connection to humans. It's, you know what I mean? It, it, that, and I, I just feel like the, the plants have a way if you've been disconnected to reconnect you to what is important and a reminder of what's important. And even if things get, I mean, life is life, right? Things are going to get busy again. You might in like, you know, a little bit get too far unhealthy, but now you have the tools or the wherewithal to like get healthy. You know what I mean? Like it'll knock on your door in your brain, like, Hey, you're a little bit too far to the left, come back to center, you know, because you have the tools there and you know where center is. And like, even if like work takes over busyness or whatever, it's like the little like voice in the back of your head is like the reminder, like, Hey, come back to the human, come back to the moments, come back to center. Right. And the plants just have a really useful way of bringing you back there in remembrance. If you've gone too far away from it and especially life where it is now with technology and all this and like all the frequencies that are out there and the busyness of everything and it, it's so easy to get taken into that that disconnection right so it's like yeah in the mornings your kids just want to they love you they just want to see you right they're so stoked they're like my dad i love my dad i just want him to wake up and want to play with me but then in like our world it's like i'm just so tired and i've been working so much and i just need this extra i just, time want, I just want to sleep just a little yeah. bit more <laughs> right? even for 15 more minutes <laughs> yeah and then it's like yeah being able to like un like okay but i i see this what they need have you noticed a change in them like in in behavioral or like mood or i have i it's have shifted? Yeah, I think they're still crazy, um, <laughs> but um, I feel like they're, I don't want to say less needy, but um, more accepting of dad will help you color, right? He'll do this. Like I've actually seen with both of my children um, where they do a lot more workbooks mm. in the morning. Because they want to actually, you know, facilitate, you know, not only learning, which I was like, okay, yeah, let's do that versus, you know, play on your iPad or, or whatever it may be. Um, I have seen that they actually just want to engage more every morning, right? And I think that's a lot of because... I'll give that to them versus I'm super tired and just leave me alone. Mm-hmm. It's 
I'm happy to do it. Right. And I'll just sit in between them. I don't have to do anything, but it's just participating in the experience in, in itself. Um, they've done it much more every morning since I came back. And I, I, it's awesome. It's, it's helped them with school. It's helped them with, uh, you know, kind of their education and, um, we'll, we'll play games, um, nowadays where we do flashcards about, you know, different animals. Mm -hmm. Um, they want to do that. Right. Where before it was like, Oh yeah, just give me a pop tart and hang out. No, now they want to let's play a game of, you know, the alligator has, you know, four legs and it lives in a swamp and all this good stuff. And we go through that and it's, it's been awesome. That's amazing. Cause like, yeah, you're setting that engagement with them. That's different. And then you're setting the foundation for them when they become parents, that connection, you know, that time they're going to remember it the rest of their life right yeah it's the little things and it's that time spent it's that engagement is that you're paying attention right being present is everything mm -hmm. i still remember there was times i would work all day coloring a picture and my mom would be so into having to clean the house you know and i'd be like mom look at this picture and she wouldn't even like she wouldn't even look up and she's like i'm not mad her about this so don't worry about that <laughs> but she'd be like cleaning the refrigerator yippee mom look at this picture she wouldn't even turn her head and she'd be like yep that looks oh that's so good and i'm like i remember my little kid heart being like you didn't even look <laughs> at it like you're you can't say it's good you don't even know what it is yeah, I so say it's, like, it's crazy a lot to my son when he's saying a story. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> like, you know, instead of, instead of, you know, responding, that's something I used to do, you know. Uh -huh. But it's like those little things. And it's funny, I still remember that. I, I, you know, my animosity that I had to work through with my parents wasn't that, but it was a thing that I always remembered. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you didn't even look at this. <laughs> Because it's a present engagement, right? It's yeah. so simple. If she would have just mm -hmm. turned her head and said it, I mean, what would that have done, right? Mm -hmm. That just reminds me of Sarah, what you told me. So uh, this weekend, like I rearranged the room, it's a total mess, but it's, I've been moving stuff around and things that, you know, that are like my daughter's, or that I would think they're my daughters. Like I, I, I've been asking her, hey, like, do you want this back? And just hearing you, like, you, you didn't look at me. It makes me. And what Tyler was talking about being present, like, it is so true because there's things she's given me, and she, she, when you can just see, like, her face when I ask her, do you need this? Do you still want it? And she just looks at me and she's like, oh, that is yours. I gave it to you. And it just like, it breaks me because like, I mean, I don't show it in front of her, but I'm like, when? And she's like, you don't remember? And she told my brother the other day, do not give any more presents to Vettel because she would just give them back to you or she'll throw them away. And I was like, that just makes me like notice how much unpresent I've been at moments that I haven't been aware, you know, that I just grab it or like you said, yeah, that's nice. But I was not paying attention and that yeah, kind of yeah. like hurts because, you know, it's like, wow, I wasn't paying attention. So now when she, this just happened this weekend. So yes that for me not to remember her little self that she's giving me it's like like I I know when she gives me if she makes a drawing or something but like other little details that she's made or you know like that she's creative upon and I was looking through my desk and I'm like this must be hers and she's like no I gave that and yeah it's it just it just 
it feels devastating to know how much unpresent one can become just mm -hmm. you know being so thinking that i guess everything else matters and you know getting too overwhelmed and thinking about other stuff instead of enjoying little details because you know it's it you don't know how much you're losing at that moment mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah the impression and what you were saying about your mom yeah i mean i'm guilty i am 100 percent guilty for that because yeah i i know how you might feel because i i cried through my daughter and that was not an awesome experience yeah yeah so how you you take the you take the stage now so veronica it i can't say your last name <laughs> so my name is veronica aguilar i am aguilar. from texas. yes i am from texas um so i mean just like everyone here i'm really really happy i went um, it had been an experience that I had been wanting for a long time, even though I didn't know what I was getting myself into, even though I had been reading a lot and just grasping a lot of information about the spirit spirituality side. Um, I mean, I went in and I tried to not have any expectations, just leaving everything aside and I just have been emotionally had been going through a lot. Um, I found out my mom was sick. Um, I have found out my dad had passed away. So it, everything was just like, this was, an, uh, I guess, a way of just knowing something more. I mean, um, and then as much as I've spoken to spirit and told him, uh, you know that I wanted a wolf that I was gonna allow myself to work with spirit and everything something in me was just too afraid I didn't even up to right now I don't know why I was afraid I haven't found that out that yet but I guess just through the whole peyote plant I asked it I just like Help me, help me see the unseen. Help me, help me understand what's actually going on and and everything that I'm experiencing, and to be guided and learn from people and just um, I don't know. I've been afraid of like talking to people, I guess, in that way. Um, so, um, but you did do the water ritual. <laughs> that was okay. what and you crushed it you, you crushed, crushed it, it. Mm -hmm. there was, it was awesome <laughs> I didn't help. no 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 nobody helped nobody, nobody helped. helped that was all you and i told you was i wasn't you. gonna help <laughs> that yeah. you had to do it that wasn't gonna help <laughs> yeah i mean sarah might have rubbed your shoulders a little bit but mm -hmm. you were fantastic Right. And I think that really helped you not to derail kind of your conversation, but, um, but that was amazing to watch that. That was fantastic. Thank you. It was just, I mean, I don't know, I guess it's, it's funny how like, okay, so y'all know how it, when y'all want something and y'all know it's like, okay, this is what I want, but then let's like, it's like, uh, don't want to go full force or do I just want to <laughs> stay in between, stay in the sideline and watch others do it. It's been more of that. And I've been, I've been a sponge. I've been learning a lot and just afraid to actually do the work, I guess, or put, put into action the work, in other words. Um, and just. I guess being in the retreat and meeting y'all and seeing how much, you know, how much all of us, we were, because I guess we always get into our little thought about we're the only ones going through this. We're the, 
um, you know, nobody else is going to understand what's going on. And then I guess hearing everybody, it's like, it's like, hey, I knew people were going through some stuff, but in the deeper level, it's like, it's when we, I feel like we all started connecting when we all shared our experiences and how we were feeling after you know the first ceremony and everything and it's like okay I'm like I didn't I didn't see that going on right now but yeah I was actually going through the same thing at the same time and you know it's just like hearing everybody else is like it just gives you other perspectives of that you probably were either ignoring or not acknowledging or just not wanting to you know know that what's going on and the that first night I mean I I perched and the one where I was hearing was just resistance resistance and even up to now it's been uh, I mean it's it's funny because I've still been purging I've still I still have a lot going on through my whole system and my mom calls it in Spanish, they call it an empache. So it's like whenever you eat something and it kind of like sticks in your body and your body is just like, you know, you will either throw up or have diarrhea until your body like takes really gets relieves and like, you know, throws it out. Mm -hmm. So my mom thinks it's you know something like that and I'm like well in my mind I'm like I think it's still the medicine working it's trying to get everything out and it's funny because I've even had dreams where it's 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 if in my other mind I would be like oh my gosh they're nightmares like all this is going on and and but in my dream like I always like, I always see myself alone. Like, I'll always say, oh, I don't have friends. Oh, I don't have this. Or I don't have that. And then in my dreams, are, it's like, no, I'm always surrounded by people. Like, even though it's supposed to be like a nightmare or me facing my fears or something, like, there's always people around there, like, there. And I remember in this last stream, I, I kind of, like, I don't know, it was funny because I just remember the last part where I, like, stood up and I was in front of people and I was like no I don't I remember saying like the words I don't care I don't care if y'all are with me y'all not with me it's like I don't know who I was talking to and I was like wow okay I'm standing up for myself like <laughs> I don't know who I was doing that to but it just it felt good I this whole experience just like open me up to this other deeper of spirituality that I was like I'm I'm not a I'm not afraid of no more like it's I feel a little bit more uh, more confident like I said I'm still purging all this afraidness and I feel like it's all been happening in a cycle that it was meant to um I even got a response from this um shaman in italy that i had um before i went to the retreat i had applied i had seen that he had opened up spots for apprenticeship and he was supposed to answer back before the retreat so when i i was in the retreat um, i was like I, just the whole experience i was like i love this i love what it's doing to people i love what how everybody is helping each other is so that just like made me even wanting more in it like behind my mind I was like I want to do this I want to do something similar like I whatever I'm meant to do I know I want it to be meaningful to people and help and reach out and early last week after this this whole purging is going on and all these layers of onions are coming above it's it just like I finally I was like okay spirit you I still haven't heard back from that app I'm like I if that's not the route you want me to take then that's fine it's like okay show me something else so but just you know this is what I want like I'm not afraid anymore like just and at the end of the day when I was driving back home like I, I told my brother so it's like I just got an email I had received this morning but 
it wasn't until I was driving home that I saw the email and that I had gotten a response. And until I actually parked it outside of the house, it was, you have been accepted. Please create a profile <laughs> so you can like, I, I guess like get connected. Uh, and I'm like, what? I'm like, spirit, seriously? So after I tell you kind of like, sort of like every year, like, uh, uh, I, uh, if this is not, you know, it's like not giving up, but like almost saying like, okay, fine. Like I, surrendering, I guess, in other words, you know, like mm -hmm. fine, put me somewhere else. Um, I, I actually saw the email and was like, wow, I got in. It's like, now I have a lot of dedication that I have to put in. Because every year he decides if if you continue or not in wow. in yeah. that. So I am super delighted, ex excited on that. And then especially because on um, I know I told you on the last Zoom meeting um, that my daughter wanted to go sell to this event, mm -hmm. and I mean. We went, we sold, we sold all our little candles that, you know, she wanted to make and that was great. But I did something that I hadn't done. Like I actually put my, a little sign that said I was going to do energy work for whoever wanted. I mean, like it was just, it was just a $10 fee, you know, nothing major. Um, but I just, that's, I mean, I, I wanted to put myself there. Because I knew that if I put complimentary, people were not going to really take it serious. So yeah. I was like, okay, fine. And um, I got to do two people. And the way it felt was amazing. Like, just seeing the reactions. Like, out of the two people, one person I was able to do energy healing. And then on the other one, I wasn't able to. It was kind of like something that I wanted to speak to you, Sarah. Because it was, like, funny. Like, I could feel his... I could feel the person's energy, like kind of like almost feeling like not magnetic, but like a pulse, like almost like sending it back. So I don't mm. know, maybe he was just too guarded or something. But when I was speaking to him, what I had felt and why, you know, I, I was like, I, uh, I can't do you the healing. I don't know why, but I started telling him like a little just I don't know like I got I started speaking to him and like you could just see his eyes and you could see like expression and I was like and I was like I I know I didn't do what you wanted because this was going to be your first experience I'm like but um I don't know this is what I'm feeling this is and he was just so appreciative and I was like he was just like that, that could have been the really... healing right there and I right? was just like yeah, and I, I guess I, I at that moment I was just like so happy with their expressions with those two people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is definitely what I want to do, but I wouldn't have had the courage if it wouldn't have been for the ceremony, like getting that little bit of boost of like stepping outside of that boundary that I was somehow putting myself into. So I really am thankful for the ceremony and honestly like like deep down I know I want to do it again just because it's like okay I did the resistance now I want to go deeper <laughs> what else can I I unveil you know reveal so I know I you know I've been putting it out there I'm like you know like provide me the resources you know if I'm meant mm -hmm. to go either you know, whether it's the, in the next two retreats that y'all do or even next year, like I've already put it out there. I'm like, I, I I feel like deep down I need to do it again because I feel like this first one was just like, like almost like the, the medication. The test run. <laughs> yes. And it was like the test run for all of us. Like that's how I feel. Like I'm like stoked for December because I'm like, I'm even as like holding my spot down, like I know even more of like what I want to prepare, what, you know what I mean? And like, I know now, even for me, cause I've never done a two night ceremony. And so like, I know how, where I can 
where I need to hold energy back and where I need to give. And now I know the first night I can go even further in the energy that I give because the second night is more chill. I was holding a little bit because I didn't know how much energy I would have to help people walk through the second night as well. And now that I know that like it seemed for this group at least, most of the heavy lifting was the first night. And, and I mean, that's how it was set up was the first night was meant to be the masculine and the shadow that was to walk through your shit. And the second night was to go into the feminine, the celebration. And it really balanced out that way, but I wasn't fully sure if it was going to. So now I even know as facilitator of like, you know what I mean? I'm going to even take it another level up for that first night as well to really like dig in deeper to help people really on earth. I will say that second night was awesome. So great. It was so, it was so fun. I like, I loved our little party outside when we went <laughs> yeah, to the day. We had a party and we, like, outside. When you could come back in, we like we were just familiar. having a party. Yeah, it was, it was great. It, like the first night was like, once again, like, the whole cleansing thing it was painful but it was great it it reactivated my mind and then the second night was we all had fun Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. we had to sing songs we had to you know i wrote a poem which is kind of lame um but (laughs) did it uh (laughs) but it was fun right uh i i I think my experience just you know overall was maybe a little bit different because i was the only man right i was the only male there which i was like i was a little bit no don't say that i mean you had mark and you had ron (laughs) so you weren't yeah, and yeah, then Mark Louise Ron, came in. Right. So you weren't fully the only male, but yes, <laughs> you were from, from the ground level. Yeah, you were the only male. Brody, right? That, that was yeah. cool. Um, but male participant. Yeah. Right? So that was um, luckily it meant that I got my own room, which was nice, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I got to sleep by myself all day. Um, but Overall, I have always appreciated strong women, right? And I think that's very important from a male perspective. Um, My mom, I talk to her every day, right? Throughout all my college and everything like that. Um, But I did see, which was awesome, is, you know, when it comes to Veronica, and summer you're strong women you're very strong right it Thank actually you. i almost cried every time i talked in, in before the group i'm actually tearing up right now um but you're strong you got it right I believe in you. Well, we needed you there. I feel like you yes. balanced us out too. Like that was definitely necessary. I'm, I don't know why my dogs are going crazy. No, it's fine. It's fine. That's but, why. Yeah, I believe in this work of in this container, and I think I spoke on that of the importance of having the balance. I think there is the time and the place of the of the man retreats and the woman retreats, but I actually also really strongly believe in us doing the work together and that's what I was saying at the retreat why when I first came to everyone to put this together and I'd sat a lot of time in wondering if it should be co-ed or not and it was very much strong that it was meant to and I think we need that with each other is to be in ceremony in this capacity with each other to restructure and to and to feel that because we need you know um we need to heal together and we need to witness each other and the strengths and the weaknesses right um 
but to me, I find it very important. But what were you going to say else, Tyler? I was going to say too, is it was awesome having Margaret. Mm -hmm. She was like my spirit animal, right? Mm -hmm. Next to me. Like she went through a bunch of stuff that you helped her with. Um, but I think it was just a community, right? And I think this is why it really works. It's not necessarily just the plant medicine. No. It's the community that you build, right? I have never gone to a random place with no. five random strangers and played Uno during the day. I haven't, right? <laughs> I, I I would literally love to just sit there and watch, you know, Sports Center, but that wasn't an option. Yeah. Right. So that takes you out of it, right? And I think you know, Mark and Lana, which was awesome, or even you, Sarah, right? Right when I got there, it was like, make this your home, mm -hmm. have fun, right? And um, I think. Also, one of the great things that we did too, uh, you know, summer, you and I is, let's go to the pool. Yeah, right? <laughs> we went to the pool. Yeah, we actually connected in the pool, right? Yeah, Just talking about random crap, right? And I thought that was that was awesome, right? Outside of everything else, right? There mm -hmm. is those capabilities. There is the um, you know, let's go mess with the chickens and, and whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, but understanding that it's, you create like a little tribe, right? And we are the OGs. And I think, I think that Mark and Lana should, as well as Ron and you, Sarah, um, maybe in fifth year anniversary right because now everything's kind of uh, go through is we do an og retreat oh yeah we're yes uh, please wait yeah, i don't want to wait totally five years yeah. <laughs> well, i don't want to wait five we don't years. have to we don't have to wait five but <laughs> yeah i'm just saying i'm saying we can call That's it the OG idea. retreat yeah <laughs> yes our little reunion <laughs> yeah yeah and come and I mean we don't even need to make it a retreat we could just make it a like a weekend to play you know and just like hang out sure. and be in ceremony together you know yeah you know, I have to I want to speak on it I don't know why I kept calling her Linda but it's Lori who left right who yep. left halfway through and I wanted to speak on on that of like having a participant that came and had that resistance kind of what you felt Veronica in the gentleman you were trying to heal in the wall. Right. And it can come into so many forms of hypocrisy says a quote that before you heal someone, ask them if they are ready to give up what made them sick. And you can't, like I said to you guys in the beginning, like I'm your assistant right? Like you're healing you. I'm just your guide to help you walk through the path. I'm not healing you. You're healing you. I'm just using the tools that I've picked up and learned and been gifted with to help facilitate that process. But if you don't want to heal, you won't heal because I can maybe alleviate things in the moment but if you're wanting to hold on to everything, it's going to come right back. It's when people go through different, um, don't mind the chaos going outside my house right now. I don't know if you can hear the sirens, but it gets a little obnoxious like that here. Um, if you, people that get reoccurring sicknesses and they'll like, let's say, let's put it for cancer. It's like really loud. And it goes in remission and then it comes back. You could say there's a lot of environmental factors you could say this you can say that to me i feel like it's where they are at in their spirit in in their emotional body in what they want to let go do they really want to heal or do they want to stay in the story and at that moment what i witnessed in lori is wanting to stay in her story and it didn't matter what i said to her 
It didn't matter if I knew I could see I had these little moments of like breakthrough and like, maybe we're going to crack her out of it, you know, because this liberation is just literally right here. It's just a pivot. You're right there. Like I can see it. And she didn't want to fully pivot. And from a lot of what I've learned in this work is you also, everyone's on their own timeline and you have to honor the timeline that they're on. I really think she's going to be back. And maybe, and it was just, it was too much. Like it was, you know, it's like, you can't also push someone too far too fast. I think she got what she needed to get her to another level, but it's all to me, ultimately her decision. If she wants to decide to let go of what made her sick and sick, meaning wherever she is, mind, body, spirit, not just like in her body. And so her leaving it was really a testament to me that she's not ready to let that go. And I'm not going to stay in the, I'm not going to convince someone to stay when they're not, because then the elevation of the group goes down. If she doesn't want to rise with everyone and as a collective, if we're all now going to celebration that next night and you have someone that doesn't want to come along for the ride, I would rather see you go because I want to see where everyone's going. And it's so funny because I think we all could come back where we're like, we want to do it again because we want to go even like, where can we go yeah. now? Like, if, I, we, I if we can do this second night, I'll, I'll do that every weekend. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> and, but the next time we probably will, if it's, you know, if it is like the OG group or we have like, if we do a retreat, that's actually everyone that's done the process once comes back. So it's even just, beyond just the, you know, the, the OG crew and that everyone that's gone on a retreat and then we do the OG retreat, you know, so like everyone's been through that initial process. I think it will be the second night, both nights. It'll be the second night all weekend. And then it's going to elevate even higher because we excavated all of that crap. Yeah. We might be wherever we are at our lives before we do that. And it's life, it gets crazy. Like, you know, so we might come in with a little, Ooh, but I think we will be able to like, once we all get into the collective with each other, we'll be able to move through that. We could probably even move through it in beginning circle. And once we get For to sure. ceremony, that crap isn't even coming into ceremony. Cause we just like, you know, yeah. up with each other that now we're just like off to the races and going. Well, because I think the whole first night was just like so much anxiety of un, un, unknowns, right? Mm -hmm. That was going to happen. And I think that's where, and obviously you do your cleansing and, and so forth, but like, that's why the second night was so much fun, right? Where we can sing and we're uncomfortable we're we're dancing and you know um you we're know vulnerable. And mm -hmm. doing yeah you know, we're we're open to be vulnerable mm -hmm. right i think where the first night was just like okay i gotta sit here and sit up and kind of be on point i felt like i was like in a almost like a business meeting at that point but the second night was just like, hey, let's party, right? We've been friends yeah. for years, right? And I thought that was awesome, right? And I think kind of what you're talking about, Sarah, is like if we were to do kind of a quote-unquote reunion or whatever, or even if we come back, right, the OGs come back, um, is we've done it before. We love it. We know the house, right? Everybody's comfortable. I would probably go swimming a little bit more. I'd probably go hiking more, mm -hmm. right? Except for jumping choyas, right? I'm good with those. <laughs> uh, uh, but we totally do it, right? I, I mean, I'm eager to come back, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it would be a mm -hmm. lot of fun and a, a great experience. And I'd love to see everybody again. Same, I agree. The other thing I want, oh, did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say, like, going back to what you were talking about, Lori, like, I think that's how 
I was this whole time before the ceremony, I was like in her position, you know, I was like, like almost like spirit telling me, do you want it? Do you not want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? You keep saying you want it, but do you really want it? Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like, you don't take that whole leap of faith. You still have to stay with that little grain of like fear and resistance and, just, you know, not ready. So I mean, that's what the ceremony did. You know, it's like, okay, like, there you go. You've asked yeah. for it. No. Yep, here you go. We're going to kick you into it, whether you <laughs> like it or not. You're sink or swim over there. You're in. I just wanted to say, I think there's something really, especially going through the two nights and being in the retreat setting of like, we're there you know, besides Luis coming in, and that was a special case just because he brought the sweat lodge, but creating the container did be such a safety um, throughout it and it being a closed container, right? Um, And then having the two nights of ceremony is what I really was um, reflecting on and observing as I like reflected in when I was driving home was, we spent even more than other retreats I've been to. We spent so much time in a circle setting from the, from the moment we got there. Right. And then all the different check-ins like that. We were in that circle space with each other pretty much from beginning to end, starting with the, I'm just having deja vu right now. Okay. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. starting with the opening, like, Hey, who is everyone to, uh, you know, cacao ceremony, closing of, of everything, right. The witnessing, especially in the first night of when everything is hard and you're vulnerable and you need a puke or you need a cry or you need, you're just so uncomfortable. Right. Or like, and you don't really, we don't really know each other yet. And like, you know, that resistance or the like, you know, whatever it is. The witnessing that we all witnessed each other go through from A to Z and that you have there, it just like came in of the importance of us witnessing each other. And that since we spent so much time in the circle and checked in, throughout the whole time and we like I felt that that was really profound and I felt like we're a lot of healing and transformation even if it was subconsciously even if you weren't conscious of it was like that's where that happened a well was and it was so important to the course of the weekend because we saw each other moving through it and I think that brings some confidence in, in a, it, I, I don't really have the words for it, but like in going from one to the other, and that's what brings in the depth of the bond as well. Right. Um, and then a deeper safety and trust because all of these people witnessed you go through something really like you've never done before with no judgment and just being the space held in love. And I think there's something really profound and powerful in that as well. And that like, I really have sat with because I've been in other containers where we don't do that. And I'm like, that's why I walked away and didn't have, you know what I mean? And like, didn't feel like I got as much as I even got in this weekend for me and I'm like wow there's something to that there's something to that witnessing and especially carrying it through the whole time it's really powerful yeah I agree yeah we should probably get off yeah but that was awesome though I I'm so happy that I met all of you guys for all you guys are all like great amazing people mark and lana and margaret like we and and ron and even louise everybody you know that circle that you mentioned i can picture everyone's faces great people yeah yeah and i really do hope that other people go 
Like, I really hope, like, you know, other people, like, that are been thinking about the retreat, like, they actually take the leap of faith like we did and just mm -hmm. experience it for themselves. I mean, because, you know, other people can see that all three of us have had different but similar experiences. But, you know, and we've all taken it in different perspectives. And it's just, you know, like, don't let our word be you know the one to dictate what you're gonna live because you know your theirs can be like better or more deeper than what we've gone through and you know it's just gonna be something magical for them I don't know it's just like I really do hope other people do get to experience this because I mean like Tyler said you know not everybody wants to just randomly take a flight to some random people or like yeah. Somerset you know join a cult right. <laughs> we did look like a cult walking yeah. out in white looking at the moon but yes it was it was funny it was worth it <laughs> yeah but it is true it's like you know I have a friend that's right now on the fence of coming and he's like you know, I, 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 your, your posts about it keep popping up and he wants to go for coffee about it. And I'm like, if the medicine's calling you, then it, there's, there's a reason, right? So if you feel the calling and there's something in it for you and it's such a loving medicine and yeah, it can be harsh at times, but I just more than most of the plant medicines I've taken, this is, I mean, I think that's why I was called to, to, facilitate this is because there's something really beautiful about this medicine and it's 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 really special so yeah i agree like if you feel the tug or you feel a calling take the leap of faith because there's something deeper in it for you um for your path and you can have them call me if you if you want okay right i will perfectly cool talking about it right yeah I came with my own reservations as a, a male, right? And it's mm -hmm. it sucks to say that way, but, you know, I want to be tough. I want to be this, you know, big, strong guy, right, that comes in. Um, being vulnerable is is everything, right? I took that leap of faith, right? So, yeah, I mean, if you want to call me, Thank totally, you. totally open. Awesome. I feel like any of us like can be like a small mentor. I don't Absolutely. know. That would be kind of like, you know, because I mean, like I said, like we've had similar but different at the same time. And I don't know, like maybe their uh, questions, experience, like just whatever comes up to their mind, you know, it's like, I feel like I don't know. <laughs> Maybe besides being the OG, we're like the OG mentors or something. Totally. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we will definitely like keep that of somehow we can use. You know what I mean? Because that would be amazing. Like, just don't take it. Don't take our word for it. <laughs> yeah. Anyone boss. else want to say anything else before <laughs> we hop off here? Send me the cacao link. I'll do yes. that right now. I'll put it in awesome. our group chat. Yeah. Awesome. It's really, it's really, I mean, it's so good. I'm obsessed. I even just, my best friend was over the other day and I was like, do you want some of this cacao that I'm drinking now? And she's like, are you kidding? Like, she was just like mind blown of how beautiful it is. I'll put it in the link of this for anyone watching and listening too. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for coming back and taking the time and sharing your experience and hanging out with me again. It's so good to have met you and see your faces and journey with you and celebrate with you. And um, we're going to do it again. That is for sure. And thank you for everyone watching and listening. And we will talk with you all again soon. Goodbye. Bye. Have a good Goodbye. night. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>